Hey everyone, it's Connor from Coifin here. Today I want to give you a masterclass in constructing custom financial analysis templates like you can see on the screen here. The FA section of Coifin is where we break down the fundamentals, margins, ratios, and statements for companies across our global equity database, giving you the ability to view this data in an itemized manner. FA templates take that one step further and they allow you to reconstruct the data in your desired viewing preference, creating those custom templates. To find the FA section on your Coifin dashboard, you would head over to financial analysis here on the left-hand screen, and then you would click into any one of these. By default, every user is given a highlights template, as well as the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, some multiples, enterprise values, profitability, and solvency. And as we click through those templates, you can see here that we break everything out, whether it's related to the income statement, the cash flows, multiples, or solvency ratios. And this goes back along a time series as well. First, I just want to touch on the settings and the things that you can do with this page. So something that I'm noticing already, because this is a new Coifin account, I like having my orientation go from left to right as opposed to right to left. So we go up to the settings icon here, we can change that. I'm going to make these left so that I can see the most recent closest to the left hand side of the screen. Because we're looking at Apple right now, they have a uh, many billions in revenues. We might want to change the denomination of the currency to billions. You can also add another precision decimal point there as well. And down here in the header display, you have some options to change the period type from fiscal to calendar. And you can also show when the period ended, the reported date and the restatement type as well. Down below settings as well, you can choose to display these numbers in the currency. Typically we default to the reported currency of the security that you selected on. But if for whatever reason you want to pick a different one, you have a, a range of options here. And if you don't find the currency you're looking for, you can hit edit currencies and choose from any of the currencies we have in the picker. Over to the left of the currency picker, we have the calendar. So you can change the range of the dates that we're showing you. If at any point you want to download this data, you can copy this to clipboard and then you can paste that into Excel. Up here on the top right hand screen as well, you can add the security you're looking at to a watch list. You can also create some notes for that security and save those for future purposes. And you have the quote box up here on the top right hand side as well, which is this data up here. If you click into the quote box, you can choose which data series gets shown in that. And you can rearrange them and, and drag them around as well. And lastly, you can choose whether you view this data on a trailing 12 month basis. You can also flip it to quarterly or annual as well. So if you scroll down here on these templates that we provide for you, you'll notice that some things can be grouped like this and hidden. You've got capital structure and cash flow analysis there as well and key financials. This is just a highlights template to show you that broken down. These are non-customizable, but what we can do if we want to build our own view is head up to the top of the screen here where it says financial analysis, and then we click new. And this is going to allow us to build a template of our own. For this view that I created earlier, we're going to recreate these in today's video. This one is called master view. And this basically just breaks down that highlights template in a more granular fashion. So you can see here, we've got total revenues. We've got the growth rate. We've got the gross profit with the margins and the growth rate, EBIT, EBITDA, net income, EPS, cash flow operations, and some CapEx and free cash flow data there as well. And over here on the right, we have a valuation multiple template which basically just breaks down all of the forward and trailing multiples as well as shareholder yield. So first up, we're going to recreate that master view template, breaking down the income statement items in a granular fashion. You can get as customizable and creative as you want. We're just going to keep things simple here. So we'll hit new and we'll go ahead and call this master view. So the first thing you'll see here is the grouping. Anytime we add a data series to this grouping, it's going to populate underneath it. We can also add new groups there as well, which we'll do in the second template. But for the purpose of this, the first thing we're going to do is just simply rename this group. And we're going to just show headline figures. And we will apply that. Now we can start adding our data series. So the first thing we might be interested in, starting at the top of the income statement, is total revenues. We're just going to pull that figure in. We've got this filtered to quarterly, so it's going to show us the quarterly data. We might also want to look at gross profit as well, so we can pick that in there as well as some EBIT, EBITDA, and net income. So there's five items we've plucked from the income statement. Some extra context that we can add here is growth rates, margins, and we can also adjust how these look aesthetically as well. So the first thing I want to do is show you how to make total revenues growth rate. 
we want to show the year over year growth rate. So how would we do that? We'd go into the data series, we type in revenue, and you can see here that we have a bunch of Kager options, which you can find by typing Kager as well, or you can go into the growth rates Kager section here on the left. I'm going to pick the total revenues Kager one year. So what this is showing me at any given time is the year over year Kager of the total revenues metric. I'm just going to push this up and slide it underneath total revenues. And there's a few things we can do to help this data stand out. So number one, depending on your preferences for how things look in this table, I might want to make the total revenues figure bold and then have the text underneath it regular so that it differentiates between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this total revenues item. And you can see here, you have a bunch of formatting options. You can change the name. You can also add indentation, change the font size. I'm going to go ahead and just make this bold. And that's all we want to do for now. For total revenues growth rate, I might want to just keep things looking really sharp and just type in year over year growth with a percentage symbol. I'm going to go ahead and make that italics. And I'm also going to add an indentation, a couple of indentations, just so it separates that as well. And the last thing I want to do, because this is a growth rate, I want to quickly establish whether it's positive or negative. I'm going to turn the colored filter on. And what that does is turn all of these line items color coded. If you do rename the column, you want to go ahead and press save. Otherwise, it won't save it for you. And we'll click out of that. And now we can see total revenues year over year growth. We can do the same thing for gross profit there as well. So if I type in gross profit and I scroll down here, I can see gross profit Kager one year. It's going to add the same thing. We'll pop it underneath growth profit. And the other thing I might want here is gross profit margin as a percentage. So let's go ahead and add that underneath it. We'll go ahead and bolden the gross profit column as well. And depending on your preference for where these items sit underneath gross profit, you might want margin to be sitting here. You might want the growth rate to be sitting directly under it. We're going to go ahead and format the, the growth rate similar to what we did with revenues. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to type in year over year growth with a percentage. I'm going to indent that a couple of times. I'm going to make it italic and I'm going to turn the color on. And we'll go ahead and save that. For gross profit margin, I might want to indent it a couple of times. I might want to leave it non-italic and I might not want to have it color coded just to have a little bit of breakup between the two. Now I'm going to go ahead and replicate that same step with EBIT, EBITDA and net income. So now that we've done that, you can see how this kind of comes together. We've got the headline figures here. We can go ahead and add things like diluted EPS, cash flow operations, CapEx, free cash flow, and we can build something out that looks a little bit more like the one that I showed you in the first example. Now for the valuation multiple template, I want to show you how to construct groups as well. So let's go ahead and create another one and we'll just call it valuation. So Coifin already does provide you a multiples template, but we want to create one that's a little bit more robust. So because we're going to be using a bunch of different groups here, we will rename this one first forward multiples. And we'll save that. We'll go ahead and create a new group as well. And we'll call that trailing multiples. We'll create one more called shareholder yield and we should be good to go. So the first thing we might wanna do here is add PE. Now you get the choice of obviously next 12 months or trailing. We're gonna add the next 12 months item here. We can add price to sales on a forward basis. And we'll go ahead and populate this with all of the other forward items. If you're ever struggling to know the full kind of index of, of Coifin's library here, if you go on the left-hand side, we'll guide you whether it's an income statement, item and balance sheet or cash flow, if it's a margin or a ratio or a valuation multiple. Valuation, you'll find all the different multiples here. And you can also just search with the, the bar as well. So here you can see I've populated the forward multiples with a bunch of ones that I'm interested in. I can, if I want to, go ahead and rename all of these to remove the NTM nomenclature there because it's redundant. I'll go ahead and do that now. And again, you can rename these to whatever you feel most comfortable with. I'm going to go ahead and replicate that process on the trailing multiples now as well. So after you've added all your trailing multiples there, you might want to add another group like shareholder yield and break down how that's calculated. So what we need for that equation is dividend yield. We might want buyback yield. debt payback yield, and then we can show the shareholder yield as well. So here we can see the shareholder yield, 3.59, and we can see how each of the factors involved in calculating that output are changing the output. 
when you've created the view that you're interested in, you can go ahead and save that. And now you'll be able to come back to that and replicate it for a bunch of other companies. So if I'm on the left-hand side here and I decide I want to look at this view for PayPal, for instance, I can quickly just punch in that ticker and Coifin is going to generate that for me. So there were a couple of really simple templates, but the primary focus of this video was really just to show you how you can organize and categorize these different data series, how you can rename them and change the aesthetic of them. Also, just to give you a bit of inspiration as to what you could build. When you go on the data series picker here, you can see that we have the full extent of the Coifin data library there. So you could really build out a dedicated template for solvency and show interest coverage, cash ratios, anything that you can think of there. You can also use historical analyst estimates to see how they've changed over time. And you can also have a high level view of the growth rates for a bunch of different data series there as well. If you think of any unique custom templates that you'd like to see us build, feel free to reach out. I hope that helps you for this video to give you the tools you need to go and get started and build your own. As always, thanks for watching. You can reach out to us by dropping a comment below. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Koi Fin Charts, or you can ping an email over to the help desk. Thank you.